Hey guys, what's up? It's Scoundrel here, and today we are covering a fairly long video. We're looking at every single weapon in Rules of Survival, and we're going to compare them against each other in their own class. Now, those of you that might have seen these types of videos from me before, you'll notice that there is quite a lot of similar um, graphics, and there's a lot of similar stats in here, especially for the rifles section. So if you want to skip to sections that you have not seen before, I will put those in the description. Those will be rifles, SMGs, snipers, and shotguns. I have previously produced videos videos for rifles and I have previously produced videos for snipers but SMGs and shotguns are new uh, and you guys can go and check out those videos individually if you don't want to watch this but all of the same information from those is in these videos as well and also I have updated the rifle section to reflect a couple of the M14 EBR changes as well so there's a few changes to the rifle section overall but honestly a lot of that information is going to be similar to what you may have seen before however for those of you that haven't seen this before what I generally tend to do is compare all of the weapons in terms of their damage their recoil the attachments they can have uh, and we talk about drop-off damage for rifles, we vary those stats when it comes to shotguns and snipers, because snipers naturally don't have drop-off damage in rules of survival. So, let's take a look at our first rifle, which is the M14 EBR. Previously the king of the rifles, and realistically still a very good rifle to have in your inventory, it still manages to avoid drop-off damage, which is the one stat that kind of plagues rifles in general in rules of survival that long range firing of rifles you always have a drop off in the damage that will be represented in this video the m14 ebr however does not suffer from drop off damage it is supposed to be a long range marksman rifle and therefore you can still use it at long range and still get the damage output it's supposed to be a little bit like those semi-automatic snipers like the svd the one of the benefits of the M14 EBR though is that it practically had no vertical recoil whatsoever. A recent nerf to the M14 EBR upped the vertical recoil making it a little bit more difficult to control those shots at very long range. However, still an incredible weapon and you can see uh, the, the range of damage that it does there next to the graphic. Moving on, we're going to talk about the AN. Now, the AN is the equivalent on the new map to the M14 EBR in inverted commas. However, it does have drop-off damage, so you will see a reduction in damage overall if firing at range, which doesn't make too much sense for what is primarily a single-shot rifle. However, it does compensate for that by having a little bit higher damage overall than the M14 EBR. This is a decent weapon. Um, don't get me wrong, I think it's a really good weapon if you're playing the new map specifically. And I think... You know, I would take this if I found it. If I had the M14 EBR versus this, I would always take the M14 EBR, however, because the recoil is still better, and obviously the drop-off damage is quite a considerable amount to be able to be concerned with. However, this weapon is a good single-shot rifle weapon. Uh, it will deal significant damage to your opponents if you can land multiple shots in a row. I don't generally tend to use burst fire on these kind of weapons because it's, it's honestly just a bit more of a pain to deal with with recoil, but for single-shot, it is a good weapon to have. Now let's talk about the Old Faithful, the M4. And this is probably the most versatile and well-rounded rifle in the game. It can receive the most attachments, which makes it one of the most stable rifles for both horizontal and vertical recoil. And honestly, with its fire rate and its overall damage output, it just makes it a very good weapon in a lot of situations. You can use this at long range because the recoil is not as bad as something like the AK if you're looking to fire over and over again. However, it's got a bit more versatility to that, to that, like I said, so it's a really good medium to short range weapon as well when used on automatic fire because it's a little bit easier to control than pretty much any other rifle that has an automatic mode in the game. So I think this is a really, really great rifle. Um, it's generally the most popular rifle and is also found most frequently on the map. So the M4 overall is just your workhorse. It will do pretty much anything. We're going to move on to the AR-15 now, and this is a weapon that... A lot of people said it was one of the best weapons in the game, including me, and that was purely looking at the DPS that it could output. The AR-15 has one of the highest fire rates out of any of the assault rifles in the game. If you can hit every bullet and every bullet of the M4, this will always out DPS the M4 because of the rate at which it fires its bullets. However, it is harder to control. The vertical recoil kicks much higher, therefore single shot is harder to land quick successions because you have to adjust more, and when firing on fully automatic mode, it's much harder to keep under control and land all of your shots because of that reason. So if you can control it, highest DPS weapon in the game almost, in terms of automatic mode uh, rifles. However, it is harder to control than a lot of the other rifles, especially in terms of vertical recoil. We're going to look at its counterpart on the larger map, which is the ACR. This is slightly easier to control 
the fire rate is pretty much the same. So overall, the ACR is basically the AR-15. There is actually very little difference between the two of them when you compare them side by side. And this is purely just the replacement to the AR-15 on the larger map. So again, the same rules apply here. If you hit all of your bullets, you're going to deal high DPS because it's got a high fire rate. However, because of that, the vertical recoil is a little bit more kicky. It will hit you a lot harder. The difference between the AR-15 and this weapon, though, is that the vertical recoil, whilst high on the ACR, is not as high as the AR-15. So if you compare them side by side and empty a clip, you'll notice the AR-15 reaches its peak height much quicker than the ACR. So those are the differences between the two weapons, but for all intents and purposes, they are pretty much the same thing. This is one of the... the most interesting rifles, the AKM. It's actually one of the most popular ones to use in Rules of Survival. Um, it does have the highest damage. So what the AK provides that a lot of the other rifles do not is the ability to act as a single shot burst weapon. The recoil, both horizontal and vertical, is high. If you spray this weapon, unless you're up close and personal, it is very difficult to control. As a long range spray weapon, it does not work. As a short to medium range spray weapon, it does. The benefit of the AK, however, is the fact if you are playing with a long-range scope and you're looking to pop people with single shots, it will deal the most damage. And if you hit single shots after single shot, despite a slightly lower fire rate than the uh, M4, you will probably kill them before they can kill you with an M4 because the damage of a single bullet from the AK is just much higher. It does suffer from drop-off damage, but alas, that is what it is. Now looking at the AUG, this is a crate-only weapon. The AUG is a really, really powerful automatic spray weapon. It has got a very high fire rate and the recoil is almost non-existent, both vertical and horizontal. So it is a really good weapon to use on the automatic mode. And if you like using automatic mode on your um, assault rifles, this weapon will do the best for you, especially in medium range combat. In terms of single shot, it is it is no better than the M4 or the, the AR-15 or whatever, apart from the vertical recoil is easier to control. So what you'll find because of the low vertical recoil here is that it acts very similarly to the M14 EBR in single shot ra fire range. Um, but honestly, you'll find that the damage output is exactly the same. So the damage output for the AUG is almost exactly the same compared to the M4 and the AR-15, but it is a really good automatic fire weapon, and that is what it's used for. All right, moving on to this monster, the M249. This thing has 100 bullets per mag. Now, it has a very long reload speed. However, it's slightly higher damage than most assault rifles. Not as high as the AKM, but higher than pretty much every other assault rifle in the game. There is no drop-off damage, which is a key component of this weapon. Much like the M14 EBR, the further that you fire the bullets the same damage they will do the entire time. Most assault rifles have a small amount of drop-off damage the further that you fire the bullets, just like we've talked about previously. Vertical and horizontal recoil are medium, easy to control in most circumstances. This weapon is a great medium and long-range weapon for sort of single-shot fire modes, as well as being good in the short range with its burst fire mode. It is very difficult to trade against someone that has this weapon because they are always going to outvalue you in terms of trading because it has so many bullets to work with in a single magazine. So I think this weapon, I always generally tend to include it in my arsenal because it's such a powerful weapon. Right, moving on to the SMGs, the Thompson, the MP7, the PP19, the Vector, the MP5, and the P90. Uh, I pulled a lot of these stats for the weapons from an official Rules of Survival YouTube channel. So I've used a lot of those stats to create the graphics and the overlays for this. So we'll go into the SMGs and we are going to start with the Thompson probably the best smg in the game it has the highest damage output to uh, the head and the body it has a decent controllable recoil at medium uh, there is drop-off damage with smgs and you can see the attachments that the thompson can take above it can only take a vertical and the scopes are limited up to a two times so we can only take, only take a vertical grip and the scopes are limited up to a two times however the one thing that makes the thompson really really good is that with an extended mag you can get up to 60 bullets in the magazine and it has one of the highest fire rates in the game. The Thompson fire rate is insane. And with the damage that you can see there, at short to medium range combat, the Thompson uh, practically obliterates every other gun in the game. It is an incredible secondary weapon to put next to an assault rifle or a sniper, depending on your playstyle. And the Thompson is probably favored by most high level players as a weapon. So Thompson is incredible. Trust me, you need to get a Thompson if you're playing Rules of Survival. Moving on to the MP7, you can see the damage is slightly lower. Um, attachments are very similar, although it can take an angled foregrip. 
Again, limited to a two times scope. The recoil is medium, but also I would say slightly higher than the Thompson overall. And in general, you'll find that this weapon is just a slightly worse version of the Thompson. Uh, honestly, this is going to be the theme of this entire section. Every SMG, especially on the small map, is a worse version of the Thompson. <laughs> so you really shouldn't really be considering an SMG unless it's a Thompson. So this is kind of what you'll find here. But in terms of MP7, um, you'll see the damage is again just ever so slightly lower. But overall, it's uh, it's a similar kind of damage output. But the, the, the rate of fire is lower than the Thompson and the recoil is a little bit harder to control. So overall, just a worse version of the Thompson. So when I said worst version of the Thompson, I wasn't talking about the PP-19. This is just a terrible gun. I don't know why anybody would ever want to use this gun. Uh, it actually, I think, has the lowest damage output of any automatic weapon in the game. Um, so this is obviously an automatic SMG, but I think it actually just has strictly the lowest damage output of any automatic weapon in the game. It has got a pretty decent set of recoil to, to contend with, especially vertical. So... The PP-19 is like a last resort weapon. If you have landed somewhere like Rust Bay and you enter your first building and you know that as soon as you go out of the building, you're going to have to fight someone. The PP-19 is the weapon that you pick up and go, well, at least it's not a handgun. <laughs> like that that is that is your reaction when you have a pp19 i know some people actually genuinely like this gun but in terms of stats it's just strictly one of the worst guns in the game uh, the fire rate is decent but again just lower than the thompson right moving on now to the uh vector the vector is an interesting weapon because the fire rate of the vector is also very very high but the recoil is a little bit more difficult to control than things like the thompson the damage is somewhere in between the pp19 and the thompson itself so it's sort of a medium damage weapon uh, but overall the one of the, the benefits of a vector compared to other weapons is it has an incredibly high fire rate so it, for instance on pubg mobile or pubg the vector is one of these really good up close and personal weapons because the fire rate is super high now the magazine size is lower but if you hit all of your bullets it's very difficult to out trade a vector because it just fires those bullets so quickly but in rules of survival it's actually got a lower fire rate than the thompson so again it's one of those situations where you're like i like the idea of the vector but it is strictly just worse than the thompson um but obviously again it is a good weapon to have in up close and personal situations so if you find this and you it's one of the uh, the weapons that you don't have access to that isn't the thompson then it's really good in um close quarter engages especially inside because again the fire rate is pretty high Okay, looking at the MP5, this has got a pretty high damage output as well. One of the benefits of the MP5, as you can see all of the attachments above, is that it is a very stable SMG. So the vertical and horizontal recoil of the MP5 is pretty low, um, which means that if you are trying to fire at medium range, this is a really good weapon to have because it is more stable and you can control it better. So this has got a slightly more longer effective range than most other SMGs. Um, and again, this is, a, this is a larger map weapon specifically. And it has damage output that is similar to the Thompson. What this weapon is good at is medium to longer range engages. It, because of the good recoil and the easy controllability, it is a substitute for a rifle in some situations where you don't have a rifle. The MP5 can be effective at rifle level distances because it is so easy to control. All right, moving on to the P90. Super high fire rate, contest the Thompson for a high fire rate. Very, very high damage output, meaning that the DPS of this weapon is technically higher than the Thompson, although, again, this is larger map specific. And the recoil makes it quite an easy gun to control. It kicks harder and is more difficult to control than the MP5, but it is a fairly low recoil weapon for SMGs. This is a spray and pray weapon. You literally just click or tap your fire button and it will open up 50 bullets straight into your opposition and often more than not result in good uh, effective short range combat this is a good weapon to have where you just jump out of a car on top of another squad or on top of another player and open up all hell this is kind of what this weapon can do really really cool weapon to use if you're playing much more of the larger map right we are going to move on to snipers now, and I have previously done a video on snipers, so if you have seen that video, a lot of the information delivered here will be the same. Um, and again, I'm covering the AWM, the SVD, the M1110, the QBU, the Barrett, and the AS Val. The AS Val is in a weird spot where it is between an assault rifle and a sniper. However, it uses sniper bullets, so we're going to count it as a sniper for the time being and talk about it in that respect. 
All right, we're going to start with the AWM and the bolt action rifles on the left hand side. It's got the M110, the Barrett, etc. The semi automatic snipers are the SVD, the QBU, and the AS Val. Now, starting with the AWM, if you pick it up, you're going to get an automatic 4x scope, which is going to give you some long range firing capability. So it's a good weapon to get your hands on because it just gives you some of that long range capability if you don't have a scope to complement your other weapons. However, because it is a bolt action rifle, it's going to pull you out of the scope every time you take a shot. It's roughly two seconds between each shot. Therefore, you're going to have to make that shot count because if you fire, it's going to give away your location. And as you can see, because realistically the only way to get a kill is with a headshot either to the level one armor the level two armor helmet or to the no armor it's going to take a headshot to really make this weapon super worth it if you shoot someone in the body or shoot someone in the limbs it's going to take two to three shots depending on their level of armor so you're going to have to either get two quick successive shots on someone who hasn't realized that you've shot them or is moving so it's going to make it slightly harder or you're going to have to go straight for that headshot the headshot is going to be the, the important part of this particular weapon and you'll find that with pretty much every bolt action rifle because the M1110 on the larger map is exactly the same. A 4x scope, a fire rate of around 2 seconds, and again, no, all snipers don't have drop-off damage. So snipers just don't suffer from drop-off damage in general, um, simply because they are snipers. They fire bullets at very high velocity. And again, the M1110 is literally the larger map identical sniper to the AWM. In fact, almost everything about this sniper is identical to the AWM. It takes one shot to kill someone at level 1, level 0, or level 2 armor to the head, but everything else is going to take 2 to 3, uh, as you can see by the damage scales there. At level 3 armor, it's going to take 3 shots to the body to kill someone, 2 shots to the limbs, 2 shots to the body at level 0, 1, and I believe 2 armor, although I'll have to double check that stat. So realistically, the only thing that you have to look out for when using these bolt action rifles is level 3 helmet for going for the headshot, and level 3 armor for trying to take a couple of body shots in quick succession. So those two snipers are the two first bolt action sniper rifles. Now we're going to cover the Barrett. The Barrett is crate specific. It comes with the default two times scope, so you don't get the automatic four times scope on the Barrett. However, generally when you pick this up from a crate, there will be an eight times or a four times in the crate with it. As you can see, the damage is significantly higher for the Barrett across the board. It will one-shot someone with a level 3 helmet to the head. The only thing that limits its one-shot capability is level 3 body armor, and I think also level 2 body armor. So both of those specifically are going to stop the Barrett in its tracks when going for a one-shot. However, it is a one-shot everywhere else, including the limbs. So the Barrett is, is if you get your hands on it and you just, you just aim down the sights at someone, as long as they're not wearing level 3 body armor, you're going to kill them. The Barrett is, is very sought after for that particular reason. It is probably the most powerful sniper rifle in the game because if you have positional advantage and you're catching someone by surprise, the Barrett absolutely slaughters everybody. It is a really, really good weapon. However, you do need to relocate after you shoot because obviously it is a loud weapon. It will give away your position and you need to make sure that you maintain that element of surprise when using that weapon. All right, now looking at the SVD, a semi-automatic sniper rifle. It does not pull you out of the scope when you shoot it. It comes with a default holographic sight. Um, however, obviously to compensate for the fact that it is semi-automatic, the damage output is also lower. Think of this as a happy medium between something like the M14 EBR and a full bolt-action sniper rifle. And this is kind of what the semi-automatic sniper rifles are designed to do. It is still a one shot to the head uh, and will remain a one shot to the head at level one armor and level two armor, I believe. Um, obviously, at the body, you're going to take two to three to four shots to kill someone, maybe even five at level three armor. So you can see that it is one of those weapons that you do have to make sure that you're looking to maintain accuracy over the course of a couple of shots. Easier to do because you have um, the ability to remain in scope. So if you put a four times on this baby, then you can literally fire up to 10 bullets in quick succession at your target. We're going to look at the QBU. This is essentially exactly the same as the SVD. The only difference is that you can have a grip on it and the SVD cannot, but the damage output is almost identical um, and the fire rate is also very similar. This basically does what the SVD does. The damage output, as you can see, is slightly higher on the QBU, um, but this is larger map specific. 
Um, so obviously this weapon, if you get your hands on it again, is one of those quick firing semi-automatic sniper rifles. Really good with a four times scope just to seek someone out at medium range, pop off a couple of hits at them and try and take them down really quickly. So QBU, great weapon. And honestly, if I were to compare it to the SVD, I would say slightly better than the SVD overall, but you do need the grip to compensate for the fact that it is a little bit harder to control than the SVD. The SVD's vertical recoil is not as pronounced as the QBU's. That's why you get the grip. So if you do get the grip on the QBU, it's going to make it more in line with what the SVD can provide. All right, we're going to be moving on to our final sniper rifle now, and that final sniper rifle is the AS Val. This is another crate-specific weapon. It comes with an automatic silencer and an automatic 4x scope that can't be upgraded. It also has a very quick fire rate. However, the damage output is much lower compared to the other semi-automatic sniper rifles. What this does have as an advantage is that if you do pick it up, it is a very stealthy weapon. This weapon is super good at firing medium to long range and being able to cover and and sort of conceal your position and it is a sniper after all so there is no drop off damage so if you get the as val a lot of it is going to rely on your ability to get a good position on your opponent also quick successive shots need to hit to make the best use of this stealthy weapon this is basically the stealth sniper rifle it favors a stealth style play style and because of the fact that it is a sniper and again has no drop off damage it does mean that you are going to have advantages in long range fights with this weapon so if you're looking to pick, pick someone off without them ever hurt hearing you shoot, this is kind of what the AS Val is designed to do. All right, now moving on to the shotguns, and let's start with shotguns that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the M1887, the M870, the AA12, the Saiga 12, and the WRO hunting rifle. It's interesting calculating shotgun damage because shotgun damage is going to look insanely high. But what that is, is when you hit every single pellet of your shotgun, they are supposed to deal high damage at very close range. So the damage that you'll see on the sheets is the damage where if you are literally pointing this at the back of someone's head and the muzzle is touching their helmet. That is kind of what the damage that you're going to see from these weapons is illustrated as. But obviously, even at a range of about 5 meters, you're going to see a 30% drop off in damage. So these shotguns get significantly worse the further that you shoot them away. So we're going to start with the M1887, the, one of the highest damage shotguns in the game. The only other shotgun that has similar damage is the WRO hunting rifle. It is a one-shot kill at any stage of the game versus any armor when you are literally next to the person and every single bullet hits. But obviously the damage goes down the further you are away. At 5 meters it's about 30% reduction, at six, uh, 10 meters it's about a 60% reduction. This is a two-bullet capacity shotgun with a slow rate of fire, a high reload time, and a f pretty high spread. It is meant to be a weapon that you kill someone with from the first bullet in a confined space like a building or if you sneak up on them and just shotgun them to the back. This is not supposed to be for elongated engages. You have to be absolutely certain that you're going to hit your first bullet to make this shotgun work for you. However, there are some shotguns that have a bit more flexibility. This one, the M870, does indeed. It has a bullet capacity of five. The shot firing rate is slightly higher because it has five bullets, but it is a pump action, so you do have to pump between each shot. The spread is about the same, and the damage is slightly reduced due to the increased number of bullets in the holster. However, it has got a pretty decently high damage and is mostly going to one-shot kill someone if you get very, very close. Um... I personally don't like this shotgun as much over the M1887. Uh, I think if I'm going to hit a shotgun bullet, I want to hit the first shotgun bullet. Uh, otherwise, I'd rather just have an SMG. The shotgun bullet for me is supposed to be like a one-shot kill, uh, and that that's done with it. I, I think otherwise, I'm struggling to see the usefulness of it over an SMG, because SMGs do really well in close-range combat as well. Um, so I'm going to be now looking at the two automatic shotguns, or the semi-automatic shotguns. The AA-12, that can have a scope on it. It's got a, a longer range compared to most of the other shotguns. Uh, the spread is medium to high, not quite as confined as the Saiga-12, but it's got a good fire rate because it is a semi-automatic shotgun. has five bullets in the chamber, but because of the fact that it shoots quicker, it has a reduced damage overall. Still, high damage if you're up close and personal. It's still going to one-shot kill people versus most armor levels. Um, however... As you can see, um, it's it's lower damage. Now remember, the damage is if every single pellet from the shotgun hits, not just if you hit someone with the shotgun because you don't know how many pellets could hit. And it's very difficult to tell how many pellets you can hit unless you're literally next to that person. So it's, uh, again, take the damage with a pinch of salt. It's supposed to give you a spread and a comparison tool between all of the different shotguns in terms of their overall damage output. Right. 
We're going to move on to the Saiga 12 now, and the Saiga 12 has got a very, very good spread for a shotgun because it's got the long barrel. It often, uh, you can see it be a bit more accurate than most other shotguns, so therefore it's got a slightly longer effective range. It is also a semi-automatic, so it is going to have a decent fire rate. The damage is exactly the same as the AA-12. Uh, again, this is for people who can't hit shotguns. <laughs> the the semi-automatic shot, shotguns for me are that people can't hit, that can't aim very well, essentially. I know that sounds horrible, but... um. It, if you can aim well with a shotgun, you're better off taking something like the S1887 because you're going to kill them in that one or two shots. With the, the AA-12 and the Saiga-12, you're, you're banking on the fact that you're going to miss shots because otherwise you'd just take the other shotguns. However, again, slightly longer effective range. So if you're looking to shoot out of a window a little bit longer distance or you're covering a, a, a room that's got a very long span, the semi-automatic shotguns might be for you. The WRO hunting rifle is a unique shotgun. It has a bullet capacity of one. However, it doesn't really shoot like a shotgun. It has got a very long effective range for what is in inverted commas a shotgun. With a uh, bullet loop, you get a bullet capacity of two. And with a choke, it basically becomes a one shot rifle. Um, it's got a really, really good um, effective range with the choke on the end of it. And it does the same damage as the S1887. So if you are looking to headshot with a shotgun or one shot someone the s uh, the wro hunting rifle is really good at that and uh, has a pretty low fire rate but also the, the spread is also very low to compensate so yeah the, the wro is really good as a one shot machine if you have nothing else to go on and uh, it's definitely worth considering if you're looking to pop people just sort of crawling around a compound and it's also still very good at close range too so honestly the wro is a pretty good weapon overall Okay, wow, we have covered everything. Long video, I know, guys, but we covered all the uh, guns except for handguns. Um, handguns are useless, though, so who cares? Uh, so looking at all the assault rifles or the snipers or the SMGs and all the shotguns, again, just kind of talking about the, the damage stats and, and kind of what they provide. Hopefully it has been interesting and hopefully you've learned a little bit about your favorite weapon and uh, hopefully it allows you to kit out your arsenal with the best knowledge possible. See you soon.